hello and welcome to jasonnewland.com my name is Jason Newland and this is let me bore you to sleep I think I think it's number 29 and usually these recordings last for about an hour so I only listen to this or watch this video if you're watching it on YouTube when you can safely close your eyes because it's going to be really really boring And that's it really I'm just going to talk about I think I'll talk about my day <laughs> it's just every day is seems to become more boring each day as I go as I get older perhaps I should tell you in depth every single thing that I've done and thought or, or, you know, the, um, I've been working on the descriptions of my sessions because I've got 35 podcasts, which is quite a lot, and I'm trying to organize everything and make it more accessible, more uh, findable on Google and I guess other search engines. But does, does anybody use other search engines? Let me know because the only search engine that I ever use really is Google. But there are other search engines. Bing, um, I don't use Bing, but that's what comes up if I use Internet Explorer. So if I'm searching for something and it tries to put me through to, it sort of recommends stuff on Bing. Uh, what else? So I use Google Chrome generally uh, I've played around with Firefox in the past and that was partly is it Firefox it's partly because I used to watch that program Firefox which was about the was it about the plane wasn't it was it the plane or the helicopter I forget either way I liked it not enough to remember what particular vehicle starred in that television show that I watched for years but uh, I did like it I think I think it was a plane because if I remember correctly um, Clint Eastwood was in the film as a pilot and then not as the pilot of the TV show but as a pilot like a literal pilot piloting you know play, driving the plane planing the pilot you know steering that's all it is is really steering isn't it I mean you can't what, what, you can't do much can you I suppose once you're in the air have a cup of tea cross your fingers hope for the best but I think uh, pretty sure that Clint Eastwood was in the film and then they made or they whoever they are the television people those people in television 
they produced a television show called Firefox. I'm pretty sure I might I might have it wrong. I'm pretty sure it's true. I don't care enough for it to be right. I don't really that not that bothered but I'm pretty sure it's it's true. And I'm a bit hungry at the moment though. Perhaps I should have had something to eat before starting this incredibly boring and tedious recording. However, I've started and I will continue. And then when I've finished, I will proceed to make myself a sandwich of some kind. I'm not sure what, but I know that within that sandwich there will be some tom um, a tomato, probably a whole tomato, but sliced. I'm going to slice it into slices. Probably one, two. What I normally do is I I hold the tomato so it's up, upright, you know, with the, the little belly button facing up. So the tomato's belly button facing the top. And then I slice down the right hand side twice. So you've got the little cap and then you've got a whole slice of tomato. Then I turn it round and I do the same on the other side. And then sometimes I'll just continue on the side I'm already on because it doesn't really need to be turned round again but sometimes I will, depends if I'm feeling fruity and adventurous. And I might turn it over and do it again. Lots of, lots of whistling outside. It's a bit loud. That's the loudest whistle I've heard in ages. Proper whistle whistle. And uh, yeah, it's about ten past twelve in the evening. So it's a little bit late to be whistling at such a volume. But I'm sure there was a reason behind it. Or maybe that person just enjoys whistling and they've lost track of time. You know, we all kind of live our own lives, don't we? And some people, perhaps, like to whistle at night. I don't know, I don't know what the answer is to that. Unless maybe one of the neighbors, their dog was outside doing a wee and they whistled for the dog to come in and perhaps they were, yeah. Maybe you know, normally they call the dog in, like verbally, hey, Paul, come in, or whatever the name of the dog is. But perhaps they thought, oh, why not try a whistle? give it a go. I mean the person might not have even realised whether they were able to whistle. Maybe it's been a lifelong ambition but they're always a little bit they're not sure a little bit uncertain as to whether the the whistle that they produced would be satisfactory to them. So they thought they'd maybe test it out tonight, 
not realizing that they actually have a really, really strong and sturdy whistle. And it, was a, it was a good volume, very, yeah, for a very energetic whistle. It's very, you know, very muscular whistle, you could say. Not that it's distracted me at all, of course. So back to the tomatoes. So I'd normally get what, one, two. I don't know, would you class the, a small bit of tomato as a slice, even though it's not really a full slice, it's just, more of a like a little lid you know I imagine if you had I'm trying to think you know if you had a some kind of jewelry box made out of vegetables you can imagine the tomato bit just being like the little lid that goes on the top. Or maybe a jack in the box. Remember the jack in the boxes? But then the tomato piece is not very strong. I don't think you would be able to hold in a jack in the box, you know, with the spring and I'm not sure. I mean the tomato piece would just go flying couldn't really reuse it and I, I don't know how long it would last as well because tomatoes do have a tendency of you know wearing out going rusty or off or whatever you want to call it you know it's it's fresh food isn't it it doesn't last forever so for this for the sake of it I'll think I'll probably just class it as a slice so one two three four I imagine I can get another two slices so that'll be six slices of tomato which is pretty good going, really. Six slices of tomato. And, you know, I've got a tendency of just having one sandwich. Uh, two slices of bread and a filling. Sometimes I will have four slices of bread and a filling, you know, in each one. Other times I'll have one you have two slices of bread with a filling and then I'll have one slice of bread maybe with some jam on top just it's like a little sweet treat yeah I quite like jam uh, if you don't know what jam is it's uh, I think it's called different things in different places, but it's uh, fruit, um, not refuge, because that's rubbish, you know, refu ref refu refuse rather, it's not, it's, um, it's, know, it's not so much pickle, but it's fruit uh, with sugar, and it's put inside a jar and it's left for weeks and months and you know for long periods of time and then it's yummy depending of course on the type of jam and you know I don't know if it's was it called fruit spread or fruit 
condom, not condoms, condiment, con fruit cordial, no that's a drink isn't it, fruit something, it's, it's got different names, I think in America I think it's got a different title, in England we call it jam, and I, you know, I quite like lemon, tur not turd, curd, lemon curd, I don't know if you have it where you are. It's it's lemon and it's quite thick and sticky. But it's really, really tasty. I haven't had any for a long time. It's kind of got the same texture as it's quite thick honey. Yeah, I would say. Maybe a bit thicker than honey. Well, not not runny honey. Because runny honey is it's not very thick at all, is it? It's, it's runny. And I do like honey. I do like um, runny honey. The thing is, what I find with honey is it's, it's very sticky. If it's, if it's a sticky and it just seems to get everywhere you know I mean there's been times when I've you know I've put my socks on and, and my feet are sticky and I added how, how did that that is how did honey get inside my socks you know how did how, why would there be sticky stuff in my socks? It's just weird. But yeah, it doesn't happen that often. And, um, oh, wait a minute, yeah. Oh, I didn't think about that. Never mind. Moving on. So, I might have a sandwich later. But I've been thinking about these recordings I do and the point of them. And the point of them is just for me to just talk and for you to just relax. And there's a benefit in relaxing, even you know, regardless whether it leads to you just drifting off out of boredom into a comfortable sense of relaxation and sleep. Now doesn't really matter about the results as such because Andre's decided to go to the toilet in the corner of the room And as usual, he always seems to want to become active whenever I make a recording, even though he's been asleep for the last few hours. You can hear him in the background. somewhere maybe he's gone to find his my slipper his little girlfriend or maybe he's gonna be naughty there's no way of knowing really what he does he just does whatever he wants to do oh he's gone back into his bag so he's he's gone back to sleep 
does like to sleep. You know, Andre is never more than probably 30 seconds from being fast asleep. Sometimes I can just hold him and he'll be awake and I just look into his eyes and his, his whole body starts to just fall down one side and his eyes close and he just falls into a deep sleep so easily. He does that as well when I'm talking to him. Sometimes I just like to hold him and just talk to him. Just say, Andre, I love you and you're so one you know, beautiful and I love you more today than I did yesterday. By that I don't mean I didn't love you yesterday because I did, but I just love you more every day. And sometimes he'll he'll stop stop licking himself and look up at me as if to say oh daddy I love you too but I'm going to continue to lick myself because that's what I do and I'll say well yeah but you can continue to do that if you want but there's more to you than that I say to him, Andre, there's so much more to you than just those natural impulses. And he says to me, yeah, but Dad, I just want to lick myself. And I said, I know, I know you do. I, I know, and that's fine. I'm just saying that there's you have more options you know there's more there's so many opportunities for you more than there was ever for me when I was your age and he said well, wait wait a second dad how can you compare me and you you're a human being you you know you could do all kind, kinds of things when you were my age and I said yeah but Andre you're not even three years old yet you know you, you get to go out you get to have the run of the place you know you don't have a bedtime you can pretty much do what you want I had to be in bed by like five o'clock in the evening afternoon time you know I, I was still having my nappy changed I couldn't, I didn't feed myself, although I might have done. It's really, it's hard to remember, isn't it? I really don't remember as far back as three. When you think, what am I now? I'm nearly, I'm 47 now. So three years old, that would mean 44. Yeah, 44 years ago. I don't remember the ins and outs of my daily feeding routine back then. Um, I've no doubt I possibly had some kind of routine, but it wasn't a routine that I um, planned for myself. You know, I didn't didn't have a diary. Uh, I didn't have appointments that I was organising for myself, and I, also I didn't have a, a receptionist or a PA either. You know, I'm not saying that Andre has a PA because he doesn't. Although sometimes I feel that I am his personal assistant constantly just clearing up after him and he said to me he says to me sometimes daddy I said yes Andre he said why do you talk so much 
rubbish. And I said, what, what do you mean? He said, well, sometimes it seems as if you just talk for the sake of talking. I said, what? what? I said, that's a little bit rude, really, mate, you know. He said, why are you calling me mate? I mean, I'm your son. Andre's fine, or son, but not mate. I'm not your mate. I said, okay, Andre, sorry. Didn't, didn't mean to upset you. He said, well, you didn't upset me, but I do find, you know, it does jar me a little bit. I said, what do you mean jar? He said, we well, jar. You know, as in like jar of jam. I said, oh wow, that gets us back to the, uh, gets us back to talking about jam again. And Andre said, no, I don't want to hear any more about jam. And I said, I said to Andre, why, 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 you know, what have you got against jam? And Andre, he climbed onto the table he took off his gloves, took off his hat, and he said, he leant on his walking stick and he said, Daddy, I don't have any problem with jam. I have no problem with honey, whether it's thick, whether it's runny. I said, do you mean runny, honey? He said, yes. And I know it rhymes. I know that you, you're you pleased with yourself when you say something that rhymes. I, I said, I'm not always pleased with myself. And Andre said, well... When are you going to sort that chair out? It's really squeaky. <sighs> it even squeaks when you breathe and sigh. And I said, look, I'm thinking about maybe using some polish, you know, furniture polish, because that might help, because it can be quite good with squeaky doors your hinges on doors so maybe it will work with the chair and he said oh, that's, that's a good idea that's a that's a that's a really really good idea dad and I said to him you know what Andre he said what's that I said you know what I've just noticed no, what have you noticed? I said, sometimes you call me dad and sometimes you call me daddy. And Andre said, yeah. And I said, well, nothing. I just, just noticed it. So why, why mention it then? I said, because... I'm doing a boring recording where I'm just talking about nothing and it, it kind of fits in with this imaginary conversation I'm having with a ferret that can't talk and he said what are you talking about can't talk I'm talking now I said yeah but you're not real are you he said yeah I am real I've, if, you know, if you think I'm not real go and have a look in the corner of the room to see what I've just done on the paper that's real and I thought yeah I, I know you're real you know Andre the ferret exists you know you live with me you're my boy I know that but this conversation isn't real is it and he said well if it's not real why are we having it? I said, I 
don't know, I'm confused now. And Andre said, well that's the thing Daddy, Daddykins, is, do you think maybe you're thinking too much into it? I said, well, we're thinking it's too much into what? He said, well, you said that it's a made up story, okay? You said that, you know, you accept that clearly I exist because I am a ferret and my name is Andre. And, you know, sometimes I will crawl all over you when you're making a recording. I, I like to disturb you when you're trying to concentrate. And I said, yeah, I didn't say that, but you just added it. He said, yeah, I know, I know, I was here when I said it. I heard myself. Um, I said, okay, you're being a little bit rude now, aren't you? He said, no, I've not even started. I said, what do you mean you haven't started? I said, you know what's gonna happen if you continue doing this? And he said, what daddy? What are you gonna do if I can continue being rude? You're gonna put, put me back, send me back to the naughty step. And I just didn't know what to say. I was, I was kind of surprised, but at the same time, I was envious, a little bit envious of how quick he is sometimes with his comebacks, considering he can't actually talk. So, it's not only jam and lemon curd and honey that I like. What else? Oh, I'll tell you, I'm bothering with something, not bothering with Marmite is something that I don't eat. And peanut butter is something that I don't really, I don't mind the smell of peanut butter, but it's, I don't know, it just, whenever I've got, it just, it just looks wrong. I think food is supposed to look different when it goes into your body than how it looks when it leaves your body. And I think it should look the same both, both ways which peanut butter does a bit. So yeah, I'm not, you know, I've never tried it with banana. Never tried the whole, you know, peanut butter and banana toasted sandwiches. I've got a friend who loves them. I say loves, I mean, he likes them. I don't think he's, He's ever written poetry about them, but uh, he does like peanut butter and banana toasted sandwiches. But when he has it, I don't think he puts butter or margarine on the toast. So I think what he does is he, he grills the toast first or toasts the toast. Then he puts the peanut butter on one slice. Then he puts the, I think he has the banana sliced long ways as opposed to little, little slices sort of similar to what I would do with maybe a tomato. But of course with a banana you get a lot more slices, wouldn't you? Because they're quite long. Although that would 
depend, I suppose, upon the thickness of the individual slices of that banana. But yeah, I, used, I think he'd have it long ways. And then he'd put the two slices of toast together. And I'm pretty sure he used to then cut the toast into four pieces. Um, from corner to corner. So it's like three or like four triangles. And I think you'd have a cup of tea as well, but it would be um, Earl Grey, Earl Grey tea with honey. So no sugar, but Earl Grey tea with honey. But I think he used to like to leave the tea bag in the water for probably four, four minutes sometimes maybe four and a half minutes and then and only, only after he's taken the tea bag out and pressed the tea bag with a little spoon to make sure that you know the tea could was as much of the tea was extracted from the tea bag as possible then he would add some honey but the honey that he had he never used to I think the kind of honey he liked was the, the liquid honey you know he didn't didn't go for the thick honey because it looked like some kind of oil disaster so he didn't didn't do that um, so he'd have it a uh, nice wet liquid honey not too much but enough to mix nicely with the Earl tea or Earl Grey tea never really understood why it's called Earl Grey because the tea's not really grey I don't feel maybe it is it's more like yellowy rather than grey I suppose Earl Yellow maybe it's not quite as uh, catchy I tried Earl Grey tea because I, I thought it was going to be healthy I thought it's a nice healthy tea and it was a little bit too flowery for me. Now I I don't drink tea hardly ever now, but when I did, I used to like it quite strong. A couple of uh, sugars, some milk, but not enough milk to dampen the strength of the tea just enough to make it sweeter and a bit cooler you know so it's a nice light brown sort of colour is light brown the right reddy red reddish isn't it really tea light brown I don't mind cocoa as well, although I haven't had any cocoa for absolutely years and years. A long time. In fact, I think the last time I had cocoa was out of a machine that sold you know, various different drinks. Yeah, so I think the last time I had cocoa, because I've, I've used coffee machines, 
uh, over the years. The last time was probably about 2000 and maybe 12, 2013. But since that time, I haven't really used a coffee machine, not even for a coffee. Yeah, I don't recall. It doesn't mean it hasn't happened, but ah, maybe I have, because I did visit a friend in hospital, and this was the beginning of last year. I think I got a cup of coffee or tea from the machine and part of that reason is because well, I find that when I go and visit someone it's okay for the first maybe three or four minutes but then you know, what, 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 what is there to do? You can't can't take a kite to fly. You know you can't can't take a wheelbarrow with you. You know there's certain things you can't take into the ward. You can't take a television or mobile disco. You know it's just it's the very they're quite limited places. I suppose this limited room and you know, if, you, if everyone if everyone took a pony with them on visiting hours the, the place would probably get quite well quite busy I imagine but I don't think it should stop people maybe a couple of people taking ponies along I suppose if they have rules, don't they? The thing is, in the visiting rules, nowhere did it say no ponies allowed. Nowhere did it say please don't leave your bicycle near the operating theatre. There's no, you know, they tell you after the event, but it's no, there's no rules. It's, it's good to know that stuff beforehand. You know, but, um, another thing that there's no, there's no rules, but they say please don't empty, you know, a big bag of marbles onto the floor. Because it might cause people to slip. Nowhere does it say that. It's really hard to know what the rules are. This chair, this chair really is squeaky to get my eyes tested because I haven't got my glasses on and I don't know where they are now <laughs> no, I'm joking they, they, they are there I can actually see them um, but seeing them is not enough because seeing them doesn't give me any pleasure you know it's not then why, why, why do we get so caught up in pleasure? It's just a feeling, isn't it? Just a, just a sensation. Is pleasure really that important? What about just being able to live and have some, you know, awareness? to enjoy a 
ferret sneezing in the background. Just those little moments of, you know, happiness. Yeah, it's a bit like, you know, oh, bless you, Andre. It's a bit like running out of toilet paper. Actually, it's nothing like running out of toilet paper. I don't know why, why I mentioned that. There's no comparison at all, really, is there? Tell you about a weird experience I had. I had um, this is when I used to do the. I assume that you're asleep now anyway, so you won't be listening to this. I went. I used to have this offer this free service where I would do pain relief, free. So this was in the local town that I lived at, at that time. And it built up and it got to the point, I, I was working full time as well. So every every Saturday morning, I would, I rented a room in a, uh, a therapy center and I would see clients for free. And they would come and see me and I'd do some, uh, you know, hypnosis to help them to reduce their pain and I just wish I was still doing it really anyway one Saturday morning I just had a McDonald's breakfast on the way to the therapy centre and I'd had a few drinks the night before And my stomach decided to, um, not sure how to put this, it, it, you know, it kind of decided to take, take control over my life for the next 15 minutes. So I just, you know, I went along with it, went, got into the center, therapy center, went upstairs went to the toilet and you know just did everything I needed to do and I was just thinking about this because I was thinking about you know running out of toilet paper but I didn't run out of toilet paper but I noticed that there was no spray there was no um, air freshener and on this occasion the room really needed an air freshener. And I thought, oh, I couldn't open the window because the window wouldn't open. So I thought, oh, okay. So I just, you know, cleaned up, I'd washed my hands and everything. Um, and I opened the door and there was someone waiting to go in there and it was my next client, it was the person I was gonna be seeing. And she hadn't met me yet. And oh, I was embarrassed. Because it's just, when I opened the door, just the expression on her face was um I mean she, she you know I know she was coming to see me uh, because she was in pain but she really really looked like she was in pain you know but it was a different kind of pain that she was experiencing it was really it was the smell it was really You know, it was pretty, pretty, pretty terrible. But I, I, there's nothing I could do, and I just I didn't realise 
that she was my next client and I just shuffled along and went into the therapy room and just hid there for 10 minutes and then I came downstairs to collect my client and it was that same lady and I don't know there's something about see, th therapy even hypnosis for helping with things like chronic you know physical issues and stuff even though it's personal I just I don't think that any any person meeting a therapist should it's good to get to know your therapist and stuff like that it's good to be open with the clients and patients I don't think necessarily that a client or a patient needs to have smelled the insides you know the, <laughs> the therapist's the inside of the therapist's body before you know hypnosis has taken place it's you know it's a little bit personal and I always remember that I don't know why it was just one of those embarrassing moments another one is I was in this it's in a clothes shop and there was no one around absolutely nobody around and I let off like a really really big farm I thought it was safe I thought the, the coast was clear there was you know there's no point holding it in and I turn I turn a corner and there's someone just looking at me and I don't think it was so much the smell but it was the sound it was a very echoey vibratory kind of sound it was it definitely it shook the windows a little bit you know and her glasses Then there was another time, and I was waiting in a it's this caf, cafe. It's a very small caf, and for those of you that maybe don't know what a cafe is, it's like a not a dirty spoon. What do they call it? Sticky spoon, um, a greasy spoon. So a place where you can buy fried breakfasts and all I was doing is I was going to get I think I was working and I was on my lunch break and this place was around the corner so I just went to buy a fried egg sandwich and I was just queuing up there was two people ahead of me and this it was a very small, very small cafe or calf, and there's probably maybe five tables in there, and it was full. People were, you know, eating. And I let off a, a silent one because you know I was able to control the the volume, and it was absolutely silent. And I thought oh, I got, got got away with that, and you know, because I didn't want to disturb people when they're eating, you know. But you know that was, it, a few seconds afterwards, it was like a stink bomb. It was it was really. It was, it was so bad you couldn't actually see each other 
you know, it's like the you remember the movie The Fog or The Mist. It was like that. It was really, really, really awful. And uh, I started laughing, and I, I was trying to stop myself from laughing because I didn't want to admit and let anyone know it was me. But I couldn't stop them. The more I tried to stop myself from laughing, the harder it was, and the more I laughed. And the other people in the queue were looking at me, and I couldn't help it. I was just—it was—it was just funny. It was—it was awful and funny at the same time. It was. Um, You know, it's like seeing a, a small child fall off a trampoline, you know, it's, it's funny, but at the same time, you say, oh, I want to make sure the child's okay, but or seeing someone sitting at a table eating and the chair just collapses underneath them. I saw that, I had a friend who did that, and it was just hilarious, but at the same time, are you okay? Um, you know, and sorry for sawing through the legs of your chair, you know, that kind of thing. Just making sure that he's alright. Oh, so creaky. I need to sort this chair out. Maybe I need to get a new chair. Oh, I've been doing some weights. I've been, um, I've got this little routine with these dumbbells. And I, I don't like the routine anymore, so I started doing a different routine. Just sticking to one exercise at a time. But doing it until it hurts, you know, until the, the proper burns. So whether it's curls, whether it's um, lifting above my shoulders, whatever. And it's quite, it's actually working, it's quite good. It feels much better than what I was doing before. So it's just concentrating on one, one muscle group at a time. So it's quite groovy really, quite like it. I think I shall continue, because it's, it's like a little bit easier. I know I, I figured something out the other day. I think the reason why a lot of young people say like when they're talking, is because they watch videos on the internet and news bulletins things like that and there's no gaps anymore in talking you know every single word comes next you know after a fraction of a second and there's no gaps like no natural gaps like there is with me there's too many gaps but that's what I do I talk slowly and you know, just go on and on. And that's a lot of pressure to put people under to to feel that maybe they need to talk like that in real life. Not realising that actually most of those things that they're watching have been edited to knock out the gaps. You know, to cut it down to a smaller file and a shorter video or audio or if it's an advert they make sure that there's hardly any gaps because the advertisers have to pay a lot of money so the shorter the advert the more they can get in in a shorter time the 
the more it's worth to the advertiser. So maybe that's why uh, the younger generation are using the word like because they're filling in that gap because they feel they have to fill the gap in and feel like maybe they're not allowed to have a gap. So I think we need to, as a society, we need to start embracing the gap. Start welcoming the gap. It's all right to have a pause. We don't have to talk really, really fast all the time. Luckily for me, because I don't. And I don't ever intend to. And I know that the way that I talk, not just in these boring monologue thingies I do, but just generally in any of my sessions that I record, I talk quite slowly. And that is how I talk, generally. And I don't feel any pressure to fill in gaps at all. So maybe it's time that we took the pressure off the younger generation. let them enjoy themselves more by embracing those pauses and those gaps and just taking things taking things a bit slower that's just a suggestion just an idea that's if, you know, if there's anybody still listening. So I'm going to go. I'm going to have a sandwich. And I will upload this. I'll have to edit it. Get the volume so it's a bit louder. Then upload it to SoundCloud, Spreaker, Anchor put it onto my website, embed it into jasonnewland.com and then upload it and share it on Facebook and Twitter and various different places. So while I'm processing it, because that normally takes about 20 minutes for it to process before I could do anything, I shall get myself something to eat. I'll leave you with Andre doing it. Don't know what he's doing, he's just running around. Yeah. He's sniffing something on the paper. He's doing. He seems to be full of energy for some reason. Anyway, I'm going to go. Thank you for listening. If you're still awake, and why are you still awake? Why haven't I bored you completely into a deep healing sleep? So, please let me know what you think of these things that I do. I will be making more recordings. And just to remind you, you can download my free app for my, it's an Android app for my hypnotic buffets. And the link is in the, in the description. It's also on my website. So take care of yourselves. Speak to you probably tomorrow. Lots of love. Andre's climbing all over me now.
by Hello Andre Hello You come to see Daddy Hey you alright mate Oh Give Daddy kisses Aww. I love you Yes I do Yes I do Yes I do Okay, you don't want to talk about jam. Alright, I'm gonna be rude. Hello. Hello. You're the cutest ferret in the whole wide world. Yes, you are. Yes, you are. Don't yawn, I'm not that boring. I've stopped being boring now. I've now gone back to being my normal exciting self. What do you mean you can't tell the difference? Andre, stop being so rude. Want some runny honey? <coughs> runny honey. Oh. I'm going to get something to eat anyway. Will we still recording? Oh, bye again. Bye.